If someone ever talks about cowboy whiskey, chances are this is what they're talking about. The good, the bad and the smoky from The Whistler. Welcome back to the channel, my name is Matt, I'm a whiskey nerd, and this week I'm talking about the good, the bad, and the smoky from the Whistler Whiskey. Now this is actually a fairly unique whiskey by Irish whiskey standards, so let me get it into the glass, let it open up, and I'll tell you a little bit more about it. This is a whiskey that was aged in peated casks, but the whiskey itself wasn't peated. Now for those of you who are unfamiliar, a peated whiskey is generally a whiskey where the barley or the grains that are going into making the whiskey have been dried over a peated fire, so they get quite smoky. This, however, is a bit different. What the Whistler have done is they've taken a blend of three different single malts from different distilleries in Ireland, and they've taken those whiskies and aged them in casks that used to hold Laphroaig whiskey. The single malts taken by the Whistler were all aged in bourbon barrels for about five or six years, and then they were finished in these Laphroaig single malt casks for about a year. Laphroaig is quite a smoky whiskey, so this has actually had quite a large impact on the whiskey, despite the fact that the grains themselves haven't been peated. The Whistler described this as kind of a campfire whiskey because it's, while it hasn't been peated itself, it's been exposed to that smoke by aging it in those Laphroaig casks. It's not been directly smoked, but certainly absorbed some of that same smoke, the same way you would get smoked if you were sitting beside a campfire. They've really lent into that vibe with the marketing on this bottle. Like normally, I don't really care about the marketing. I more care about what's inside the bottle. But can we just for a second look at this bottle? It's got loads of references to the good, the bad and the ugly, that classic spaghetti western film. It's got bits here saying the man with no name, the Arch Stanton will rise again. On the back in lovely gold foil, it's got the actual tune from the good, the bad and the ugly. And it's even got a little match striker on the bottom. However, I've tried it a couple of times and I can't actually get a match to light. Maybe that's for the best though because this is a 48% whiskey, so you don't really want to be lighting open flames around it. Now that's enough talking about the whiskey, let's actually get into how it tastes and how it smells. Let's go in for the nose. The smoke on this whiskey, it's probably the strongest note you get up front on the nose, but it's not the most dominant note. Now what I mean by that is, typically with a peated whiskey, the peat can kind of overpower or could dominate all other flavours in there. Like sometimes you get this kind of saline, kind of seawater brininess that comes through with peat and whiskey. With here though, it's just a really strong note. It's really present, but it doesn't overpower or overshadow the other notes. There's definitely that caramel sweetness that comes through from having spent five or six years in bourbon casks. So the nice bit of sweetness kind of wrapped with that smoke and that's what and they were talking about when they were saying that it's like that campfire whiskey where the whiskey was just exposed to the smoke, but it wasn't smoked directly. There's also a little bit of like fruitiness there. It's probably going more towards the pear side of an orchard fruit rather than apples, but it's definitely like, it's definitely a nice bit of fruitiness, a nice bit of sweetiness, and a, a lot of smoke there, but not like this overpowering kind of attack of smoke. So let's go in for the palate. Mm. On the first sip, and when you first swallow it, you get that smoke. And of course, that Laphroaig had a huge impact on the whiskies chosen by the Whistler to go into this blend. But then, as soon as that fades, you're left with that sweetness, that caramel, that little bit of spice, that little bit of heat. Like this is a 48% alcohol whiskey, so it's not your standard 40%, it's not 46%, it's got a little bit more heat behind it. And that allows it to be a lot more present in the glass. So I'm gonna go in again, but I'm gonna try and see what else I can find on a second go round. Okay, on second go round, I'm able to get a lot more of that sweetness. Now that I'm more used to the smokiness, I get a lot more of the sweetness coming through. It's definitely present, the smoke, but it's kind of, if you imagine like a creme brulee, like the top of a creme brulee where it's brown sugar that's been toasted with like a little blowtorch. So it's a little bit burnt, it's a little bit smoky, but it's still very sweet at its core. That's what this whiskey is. It's sweetness, it's just a bit of smoke to kind of accentuate all that extra sweetness. And again, there's that orchard fruit note coming through. It's kind of maybe becoming more present in the finish than it is in the palate. So I'm gonna go in again, but I'm gonna talk about the finish. Okay, on the finish, there's a bit of spiciness that comes through. Now, 
it is a pot still whiskey. So these three single malts that we used in the blend were all pot still whiskeys. So it's gonna be a bit spicy. It's gonna be nice and present there, but it's not gonna be the kind of spiciness you get from like a sherry inclusion. It's not gonna be that kind of spiciness. It's not gonna be those baking spices. It's more of like a, like a peppery spice, like a white pepper spice that kind of comes through in the finish. That's then backed up by that sweetness. It's backed up by that smoke. And then as the sweetness fades, as that spiciness fades, you're left with a bit of smoke. It's not overpowering, it's not unwelcome, it's not unpleasant, it's just present, it's just there. Kind of like the idea of that campfire whiskey, that it just lingers with you, it just sits with you. It's nothing unpleasant, it's nothing unenjoyable, it's just a really nice whiskey and it's really easy to enjoy it. So the Whistler aren't actually yet producing their own whiskey, so they are distilling their own whiskey at their uh, distillery in Bowan, but they're still using sourced whiskey for their blends. In this case, I think they've chosen some really good whiskies and they've chosen some really good casks in which to age those whiskies because this is a really nice whiskey. Like if you like a smoky whiskey, there's a lot in there that you're probably gonna enjoy. There is that bit of smoke, there's that bit of heat, there's a bit of fire, but it doesn't have that kind of harsh peatiness that a lot of people don't like. If you prefer your whiskey sweeter, there is that core of sweetness, that brown sugar sweetness that comes through from the kind of bourbon cask aging. And if you like a whiskey that's spicy, there is a bit of heat to it. There is that little bit of pe uh, peppery spice that comes through from the fact that it is a pot still whiskey. So there's a lot really in here to enjoy. If you don't like smoky whiskey though, you're probably not gonna like this because the smoke, as I said, is probably the strongest note. It's just backed up by a lot of other really enjoyable flavors. So that's where I think I'm going to leave this review. If you like the video, maybe scroll down, hit that thumbs up button, hit that subscribe button. I put a new whiskey review every Wednesday and a new cocktail recipe every Friday. So subscribe and you'll see them all. And until next time, sláinte.